Good morning and welcome to another day of 100 days of devotion. This morning, we'll be speaking on the really beautiful topic of faith. And just before we get into the word of God, please pray with me for a minute. Father, thank you because your word says this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I just pray that there'll be a spirit of rejoicing over everyone joining in and everyone listening to this meditation right now. I pray that we will be aware of the fact that you are with us daily and you will never leave us nor forsake us even as your word says. Holy Spirit of the living God, I just ask that as we meditate on these words, this will not just be another time of listening to scripture, but it will be a great opportunity to put scripture into practice and to become what the word says we are. Lord, I pray that our lives will be to please you, that our lives will be to connect with you at a very deep level and in intimacy. Holy Spirit, just teach us that great shall be our peace. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. So, today we are speaking on the really beautiful topic of faith. And I feel like faith is one of those topics in Christianity that we constantly talk about, but many people don't understand. And you see, I always like to tell people that the ultimate goal of our walk with God is the building of our faith. Everything that happens in the Christian journey, everything that does not happen or happens, anything that God permits or doesn't permit is for the purpose of building your faith. Because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So no matter what you're going to do to try to please God, you cannot achieve without faith. So God has to invest in our faith. You see, faith is the foundation upon which God's agenda flourishes on the earth because everything that God will want to do to you, everything that God will want to do through you, he will need your faith for. So you cannot participate with God to bring his agenda to flourish on earth without faith. And so faith also brings answers to prayer. You see, but when we endure in our faith, what happens is the answers to these prayers come with a character development, which in turn sustains our faith. So sometimes when you pray and it feels like the answers are tiring to show up, understand that God is building your faith. So everything that God says to you, everything God does to you, everything God does through you is for the purpose of building your faith. When you understand this, of course, you would want to ask the question, what then is faith? In Luke chapter 18 verse 8, Jesus asks a very interesting question. He said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find people who can persist, who can wait in faith? The Bible says, don't be lazy, but be imitators of people who through faith and patience have inherited the promise. So, you, you need faith, but also God is saying you need to exercise patience. And so, all of these things are there to build your faith. And of course, the ultimate question we want to answer this morning first is, what is faith? Now, here's a definition the Holy Spirit gave me one morning. And the Holy Spirit said to me, faith is the unwavering trust that God is. And that one has become the surety, proof or guarantor to this fact. So basically, faith is the trust, the unwavering trust that God is and I am the proof of that reality. So to say I have faith is to say I am the proof that God is. And when we say God is, we're really saying that God exists. God does. You see, God has done. So. I am the proof that God has done. My life has become the proof that God has done, that God exists, that there's a living God. In other words, if anyone looks at my life, then they should know that God is, that God has done. You see, let us read from Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to read the verses 1 to 6 from the Amplified Version. The Bible says, Now, Faith is the assurance, title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen. 
the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. For by this kind of faith, the men of old gained divine approval. By faith, that is, with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the worlds, universe, ages, were framed and created, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made of things which were visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which it was testified of him that he was righteous, upright, in right standing with God. And God testified by accepting his gifts. And though he died, yet through this act of faith, he still speaks. By faith that pleased God, Enoch was caught up and taken to heaven so that he would not have a glimpse of death. And he was not found because God had taken him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received the testimony still on record that he walked with God and pleased him. You know, there are certain places, there are certain portions of scripture that when I read, I love to read from the Amplified because what it, the, the Amplified version does is that it expatiates on certain words that are used in scripture. So it takes from the original translation and puts some of their meanings just in braces. Read verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says but without faith it is impossible to walk with god and please him for whoever comes near to god must necessarily believe that god exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him so you see faith is really the unwavering trust like i said that god is and that i have become the surety or the guarantor of that fact so if i say that god exists faith will mean that my life is a living proof to that fact my words are the proof or the testimony of the existence of god of the fact that he has done he is doing of the fact that he is so to live by faith means to live as that surety it means to live with the consciousness that everything I do is a testament to the reality that God is. God exists. God has done. God is doing. So my life is to prove that. So I cannot say I have faith until my life is a proof that God is. For example, when you read what, what I always say is my best portion of scripture, Daniel chapter 3 from verses 16, where you look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says that after the king had told them to bow, these were the friends of Daniel, they refused to bow. And then they said to the king, King, O king, may you live forever. Our God is able to save us from the fire. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow. So these are people who have understood that their faith is much more than God's ability to rescue them from the fire. They know that their lives are a proof that God is. This is why they are ready to die. The only reason why these three men are ready to die and be put in the flames of fire is because they know that God is. There's a reality in their hearts that God exists that they belong to God. They are so full of faith that they will not bow to an idol for foreign worship because they know that they have a God. This God cannot be seen with the physical eye, but there's a reality, there's a deep unwavering trust in their hearts that this God exists. And so because of that, we will not bow to your idol, O oh dear King. Sometimes when you're in prayer, can you say, my God is able to give me this thing I'm praying for, but even if he doesn't, I will not compromise. My God is able to provide my need, to supply my need. Even if he doesn't, I will not compromise. I will not go to men. I will not go to women. I will not go to strange places to get the answers to my prayer because I think God is slow. So everything that God is trying to do for us as his children is to build our faith. 
is to bring us to the full expression of faith, to the place where our lives are a living proof of his existence. In other words, we become living epistles, we become living testaments that God is. You see, when you look at the word testament or witness or proof, it is like, you know, the person who comes to the courtroom to bear witness as a testimony. So, can you stand there on the witness stand and say, God is? The Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And truth is, so many of us become that fool several days. When you start questioning the existence of God, your faith is shaking. When you start questioning the reality of God, your faith is shaking. The Bible says, if you fail in the day of adversity, then your faith is weak. If when adversity comes, you fail. If when adversity comes, your confession changes, then your faith was weak. If when adversity comes, you begin to wonder, God, do you really exist? God, are you still here with me? God, are you still the God who provides? If you start to question the existence of God, the power of God in the face of adversity, that is a sign that your faith is weak. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 17 that for in it is the righteousness of god revealed from faith for faith as it is written the righteous shall live by faith so when he says the righteous shall live by faith he's really saying the righteous ones will live as living guarantors living proofs to the fact that god is god exists god is doing and God has done. You see, that is what it means to live by faith. And so we can look at what are the characteristics of faith. How do I know that my faith is being built and is growing? The first temperament or characteristic of faith is that faith hears. If you have faith or if you're going to develop your faith, you're going to listen to God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god so when he said the righteous shall live by faith one of the things he was also implying by that scripture was the righteous shall live from every word that proceeds from the mouth of god you cannot build your faith if you're not someone who listens to god who studies his word who is dependent on god's voice you cannot grow your faith if you don't have a deep craving, a deep enticement, a strong desire, a powerful affiliation to God's word and his voice. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4, the Bible says, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Listen, O Israel. People who will serve God, who will walk in faith, will listen to God. They will hear the Lord. In Romans chapter 10 from verses 14 to 17, the Bible says, How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Verse 15, And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Verse 16, but not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So faith comes from hearing. He starts in verse 14 by asking, how can they believe in the one they have not heard? How can they believe? It is impossible to believe if you're not hearing. This is why listening to devotions like this, studying the Bible, filling your space, your mentor space, creating a culture of Bible study is so important because faith hears. The second characteristic or temperament of faith is that faith believes. To believe is to accept that which has been spoken by God as being for you and to trust it without wavering. So. When we say we believe in God, we're not just saying we accept the story of God or we accept the idea of God. It means 
to accept it as being for you. So when we talk about believing in scripture or as it pertains to faith, we're not just referring to accepting something or trusting something. We're saying accepting it as being for you. So when the Bible says God is a provider, to believe that scripture means to accept it as being for you, to appropriate it to oneself, to say God is my provider. You see, your belief or your acceptance begins when it has become yours. Mark chapter 9 verse 23, the Bible says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible for one who believes. All things are possible. John 11, the verses 25 and 26, and this was when the brother of Mary and Martha, Lazarus, had died. And when Jesus came, in verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He says, if you believe, if you believe, in fact, if you go down to verse 40 of Luke chapter 11, the Bible says, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So the word believe there wasn't just if you accept. Jesus was saying, I've told you, if you can accept this truth as being for you, and you cannot believe if you have not heard. So the process is, first I hear and then I accept it as being for me. You cannot become the living proof of that which you haven't accepted as being for you. The third temperament or characteristic of faith is that faith considers not. Let us read Romans chapter 4 verse 19. The Bible says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now, this portion of scripture is describing Abraham. The Bible says he did not consider his body, which was now dead. His body was old. That's what he meant. His body was frail. In fact, he says Sarah's womb was dead. At the age at which Sarah conceived Isaac, it was impossible. But Abraham refused to consider the adverse situation. If you have faith, you will hear. If you have faith, you will believe. But if you have faith, you will also refuse to consider adverse circumstances. You see, when you read Proverbs chapter 3, the verses 5 and 6, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't consider your own understanding. In your understanding, things must happen in a particular way. But when it comes to faith, you must learn that even your own understanding is frail before God. Your wisdom is like foolishness to God. You see that? So God is very interested that if you have faith, it means you will hear, you will believe, but you will not consider the adverse circumstances. You know, if you're going through a situation and God has spoken a word, no matter what it looks like, you have to hold on to what God has said without shaking. You can only prove that which you consider. As long as you consider darkness, you can never be a proof of light. So God is saying, consider the light and consider not the darkness. The fourth temperament or characteristic of faith is that faith summons, faith calls, faith declares, faith speaks. That's what we mean when we say summons. So to summon means to, to decree, to pass a decree that brings something to oneself. So if you have faith, you will speak. If you have faith, we will know because you speak. The Bible said in, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, when God saw his earth formless and desolate, he didn't say, oh, my earth is now broken. My earth is now without form. The Bible says, God said, let there be light. It means God did not consider the darkness. He looked and saw the darkness, but then he said, so when you consider not the darkness, when you look and see the darkness and you don't consider it, God is saying, speak light. Speak the thing you want to see. Genesis chapter 17 verse 5, the Bible says, No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of nations. Now God looks at Abram 
and he says i have made you the father of nations he did not say i will make you god summoned from within abraham to be father so if you have faith you will hear if you have faith you will believe if you have faith you will consider not the darkness but ultimately if you have faith you will summon you will decree the bible says in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 we having the same spirit of faith according to as it is written i have believed and therefore i have spoken we also believe and therefore we speak the proof of the fact that you have believed is that you will speak because believing will cause your heart to be filled and will cause you not to consider the darkness but ultimately if you believe you will speak you will summon you will call things so what are you experiencing in your life god is saying summon light are you experiencing darkness summon light are you experiencing lack summon prosperity summon provision are you experiencing fear summon courage by your decree that's why the bible says let the weak say i am strong god is saying don't consider your weakness speak strength summon strength let the poor say i am rich let the sick say i am healed summon the thing that is consistent with god's word and lastly the fifth temperament or character of faith is faith acts if you have faith you will act accordingly there will be a corresponding action so faith hears faith believes faith considers not the darkness faith summons or confesses but faith will also act accordingly so there's a corresponding action now if you have faith you will see it by how you act there are things you will do only when you have faith i remember when i was going to publish my first book and at the time i was really going through like a very rough patch and you know things really being tough for me i prayed and prayed and eventually i decided that since i wasn't able to raise the money to publish my book i would go to the printer and and speak to the man i i just had the crazy idea so i did everything and i woke up that morning i went to the printer's house I sat with the man a stranger and i spent time telling him my vision and how that this book was going to bless lives and all that and guess what i told him if you print my book i'm going to pay you the monday after the, the launching date the guy looks at me and i wasn't only asking for a few copies i was asking for a thousand copies he said even if you had the money to pay one thousand copies can be printed immediately i asked him how many copies can be printed the man said okay at best 200 i said yes sir okay you're going to give me 200 copies long story short a total stranger agreed to print my book for free and guess what i made over a million francs from that book launching and the day after i went to pay him back faith is crazy until it's done and this morning god wants you to act accordingly god wants you to exercise crazy faith to step out and do something according to that which you heard according to that which you believed according to the darkness you refused to consider according to that which you have summoned or spoken god is saying go out and act on your faith if you have faith you will act and this morning i feel like god is trying to stir up somebody's faith you're listening to this and you've been trusting god for something and god is prompting you right now step out and act accordingly I pray for you this morning that your faith will be stirred up. I pray that your faith will come alive, that you will know that God has done it and therefore you can hear what he says. You can believe, you can refuse to consider the darkness. You can summon by decree and confession and you can act accordingly. I pray for you that your faith will not fail, that you will step out and do that which God is telling you to do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray amen now if you listened to today's devotion i want you to listen to this message over and over again god through this teaching wants to teach you to elevate your faith and the expression of your faith so this particular teaching is one that you should listen to over and over with your notebook and your pen and your life will never be the same again thank you for joining in today remember share this with someone it will bless their lives 
I can't wait to see you tomorrow. God bless you. Goodbye.